Okay, it's day 166 of this honeydew germination experiment. So as you can see, the leaves on the top are about the same kind of green or shade of green as leaves on the bottom. That's great news. Um, you know, they're not perfectly the same shade. Uh, you know, we'll get to this in a minute. This is a new offshoot, you know, a branching out of a new apical meristem from vine 1. And, you know, those leaves are darker than the existing ones all over. So I think that's just how this plant works, you know. As the leaves grow bigger, they're just not as green as the, the new leaves. So the first order of business is I'm just going to water this uh, watering tray, fill it up. Well, not completely to the brim. I don't think this needs this as bad as uh, sweet potato vines. Those are real water hogs. I'm not seeing the beginnings of any melon formations here. You know, I did a cycle of manual pollination to the best of my ability. I'm a noob at that too, so I don't really understand you know, if I'm doing it right. But, um, you know, I'm just kind of looking around and I don't see any fruits forming, so I'll have to assume that that failed. So I've taken that into account for a new plan for how to get these pollinated and hopefully that'll also satisfy the climbing tendencies of all these tendrils. So here's the second order of business. Um, this isn't a new vine. I mean, there's still only three vines, uh, three survivors from the original 50 seeds. And this is just an offshoot off an old meristem. Maybe by putting this entire pot in the shade that triggered activation for more meristems, uh, secondary meristems, to try to grow outwards in different directions and get more sun. Although, you know, having all these leaves in the sun, that totally killed everything by baking them. And you can still see evidence of that sun damage, like over here with these sunspots. But, you know, not all that many leaves have died since then, you know. Uh, but a lot of new leaves have shown up. For instance, this is a spot where Another marrow stem is starting to come out, and let me see, this is also for vine 1. So vine 1 is exhibiting new forms of dominance over vines 2 and 3 that I haven't seen yet. So this is the shoot apical marrow stem end of vine 2. We have some flowers that are going, and you know, many more that are coming. There are buds here, and many in the shoot apical marrow stem. Um, many forming, you know, here here as well. Uh, these leaves are a little funny in shape. They're very atypical. Um, you know, we talked about that before, but I don't see any resolution to it other than, you know, that's weird. You know, this one hasn't even gotten bigger. Uh, it's just something really weird about Vine 2. Um, but, you know, Vine 1 kind of is doing that in the shoot ape called Mero Stem 2. So maybe this is just the natural progression of things. And, you know, this is just something we haven't seen yet. This is the shoot ape called Maristem of Vine 3. You know, uh, these leaves are more or less very normal, but this is still probably because there are very few leaves overall for Vine 3. So what's all the hype about this new plan? You know, I'll stop beating around the bush. This is it. I've decided to make Vines 1 and 2 go upwards and use you know, the railing of my balcony is a natural trellis. So with regards to my plan, you know, that offshoot uh, marrow stem of plant one, vine one, that's gonna grow upwards as well. And it's gonna have extremely long inner nodes as is the case here. I mean, look to see how incredibly long that inner node is and how, you know, a few plants will have an inner node like that, but um, that's pretty amazing uh, relative to the leaf size you know you typically don't see anything like that if you look at these older vines it's not anywhere as near as long as that and for these more productive phases of vines one and two uh, the inner nodes are much shorter than that so I'm kind of surprised that vine one decided to shoot off an inner node that long but um, getting back to this plan you know I have Let's see, vine three is this one. 
and it goes all the way up here I'm just kind of steering it in the right direction these plants will need to kind of grow and bend on various sides of their inner nodes to their stems to kind of stretch in the right direction and straighten and straighten themselves out you know now we definitely have flowers in view of bees you know native bees and European honeybees flying over this hill and there's a lot of other plants as well as you can see in the parking lot down below there's a tree uh, that's pretty common around here and it sort of looks like fern like in appearance and it has all these yellow flowers so I'm assuming if it likes those yellow flowers it'll like these yellow flowers so they'll definitely see that in the morning I'm seeing giant carpenter bees feed at those trees and those are like not even 10 meters away so one thing I don't care to do is to water from the top for this plant um, in the early days of this honeydew series I was kinda killing a lot of things by overwatering in a glass dish with no drainage so uh, this plant spa system has been working well even for vine 3 I'm sure the roots have reached all the way into the water tray by now um, vines tend to have really deep reaching roots because they use a lot of water so as in the case of my sweet potato germination experiment you know the roots and apparently mushrooms have already reached the water tray long long ago so I think this setup is very nice it solves all my problems it solves my space problem too and hopefully I'll be able to get some footage to show you of bees uh, visiting these flowers that are exposed uh, a lot of these are wilted right now but you know over the coming days um, there's always going to be a few flowers available on each plant so one last thing I just wanted to address is you know I have this subscriber and he likes watching the ginger series and he was asking with all the fungicide the deconal that I sprayed in there is it going to be safe to even eat those ginger rhizomes when they're ready for harvest and I would say the answer is a resounding yes already even though the rhizomes haven't even showed up and probably won't until winter because basically uh, I've been watering from the top for these two plant series and they're just teeming with mushrooms fungi and insects so if the insecticide and the fungicide doesn't work already then basically what's it going to do to a human um, pretty much everything has broken down I've done some research to reply to him back then and basically the deconal active ingredient um, it degrades in studies uh, within like one to three months higher if it's uh, faster if it's hotter so if you have mushrooms sprouting out that's a lot of fungi uh, that means the entire soil is full of fungal mycelia and that means that the fungicide is all gone and that's why successful crop growing in very large fields often requires many many repeated springs of fungicides and pesticides and you know uh, very specific compounds because um, nature is very robust and basically they'll keep sending more and more swarms of attackers at you and if you don't spray anything then it's really really difficult to grow anything on a large scale I mean here I have a uh, very isolated environments and I'm already kind of overrun with fungi and bugs um, although I'm not really concerned for mushrooms they're not going to eat my plant root systems they only eat decaying matter and you know the bugs I've seen so far don't really bother me either so basically I'd say this honeydew by the time you know we don't even have fruits yet but by the time we do it'll have been a long time and I don't even think that insecticide can work its way through the entire system anyway and get to the fruits so we'll see what happens okay it's day 174 of this honeydew germination experiment so it seems like we've lost a few leaves in the middle on the pot and you know we just have some very large um, healthy or relatively healthy leaves left um, their color is about the same as these ones in the shade the new ones climbing the wall and there's been a few cobwebs I think those are just from spiders coming over from the sweet potato vines so so far I can kind of see one between these two plastic support columns um, 
It's not a whole lot, but you know, there's some dead leaf matter I can get rid of back there. Let's see. The problem with that is like the stem was still kind of green. Hmm. There's another one. You know, over here too, there's some more. here. I'm dying to, uh, you know, a little bit of that was tender, but at this point, these are all destined to die anyway. Um, let's see, there's a leaf down here. Yeah. So, it's basically invisible to you, but I can clean up some of these cobwebs. That's basically it. There's probably some stuff I can't see. That's good for now. So we've lost a lot of leaves in the middle. Uh, those that remain, you know, I think they're a lot bigger now. They look a lot bigger than they were, you know, um, two or three weeks ago. So I think that's definitely promising. It means that they're thriving in the shade. And it was the correct decision to move them into the shade. So it's actually a lot easier to see what's going on now. Um, this leaf looks kind of yellow and brittle, and this one too. I'll give them some time to die. But you know, this is vine one here, and it has these really big, robust, healthy leaves. And it has the thickest stem. Let's see. It was here. Here, for example, uh, this leaf looks kind of brittle. Eventually, they'll all be cleared out. But let's see. This also belongs to Vine 1. And this kind of stretches behind here. You know, uh, when it grows long enough, I'll be able to have it support itself on you know, the rail above. So, going back to Vine 1, uh, it has a lot of these new healthy leaves. You know, a while ago, I made a loop all the way up here, and this is where it ends, basically. So I kind of put them in water, you know, this is a leaf for vine 2, and it has a bunch of new leaves as you go up here, some that were uh, never fully formed for whatever reason. You know, then it goes all the way up here, and it loops back through the railing, and it actually ends up here. So this is the shoot apical marrow stem. You know, uh, both vines one and two are still flowering. And these flowers, you know, they're very ephemeral. They only last, I don't know how long, maybe just two days or something like that. Three days, maybe at the most. And we also have a uh, vine three that's made it all the way here. Vine three is not very long at all. I mean, it goes here and you know, it looks a little thicker at the bottom right here, but it gets thin over here. And it basically ends there in the middle of the pot. So, vine one, the extension of a new, you know, shooter apical marrow stem, it's basically climbing on that and has a tendril attached to that. We can rearrange all of this later, but I just want this vine three to get long enough so you can put the shoot apical marrow stem on the rail and it'll have its own support system and whatever other um, vine offshoots that come out of the sides can eventually climb up there too on the existing vines. In any case I think the vegetative growth has been really promising so as this continues the plants will have more resources to generate additional you know vine offshoots um, additional flowers and hopefully fruit someday.